Hey Explorers, how's it going today? As you see here, today we have wind, we have water, okay? What do these two things have in common? The avatar can control them, right? Okay, no, it's erosion. Both of these are examples of erosion. But what is erosion? If you stick with me today, that's what we're going to be exploring. So, for our lesson, you are going to need different types of earth materials. So, some kind of rocks. We have sand and dirt. So, we have these three different types of materials so that we can compare the different earth and how it is impacted by erosion. You're gonna need something like a baking tray to put these earth materials in and actually experiment in. We're gonna need water and a pitcher. You're going to need some kind of soft rock, like limestone or sandstone. And then we're going to need three plastic bottles to put the rocks in, okay? So, with that being said, go ahead and gather your materials and then tune back in as soon as you get them. Alright, so earlier we saw two types of erosion, wind and water. Or did we see three? Okay, animals. Animals actually can cause erosion as well. And so we're going to take a better look at these different types of erosion and how they actually impact the environment that we see them in. Okay, so for this we're just going to imagine a couple of scenarios. Okay, so everybody close your eyes. So, for our first scenario, we're on a beach. The wind's blowing through your hair, you have the gentle crash of the beach again, or the waves against the beach, and you build a sandcastle. And you turn around to go grab lunch, tide comes in, and then when you're back, your sandcastle's gone. What happened to your sandcastle? Well, the water came in, and it washed the sandcastle away. So that's, a temp that's an example of water erosion. Okay, so things like beaches, rivers, and lakes, as that water is moved around by either the wind or uh, the, ch the tide changes, or even depending on the amount of rain, the earth around that can change. So sand gets washed away pretty easily. Okay, so our next scenario. Now you're in the desert. It's nice, it's hot. You kind of feel like the, the wind is so hot that it's almost like you just opened up the oven to get the pizza rolls out of the, the oven. Okay. And then you feel this sand hitting against your face. Where's this sand coming from? Well, you're not near a beach, so what's hitting you in the face? It's still sand, right? But what's picking it up? The wind. So in a desert, you have all these fine particles of sand because there's not a whole lot of trees or a lot of landscape to break up how much wind there is. So that wind is br uh, running across the desert hitting all those rocks, breaking them into smaller pieces, and picking them up, and that sand's getting blown around. Okay, so we see a lot of wind erosion in places like the desert. Now our last scenario. We're hanging out in a forest, you're just taking a nice little walk, and you notice off to your right through these trees that there's this winding path that cuts through the trees. And it's a little skinny, so you don't think most humans have gone through there. So what would have caused that path? Okay, the earth's dry, so it's not water. There's trees all around, so it's not wind. What would have caused that path to be cut through those trees? Animals. Okay, so if you think about uh, like a deer trail that's caused by a lot of activity through deer weaving their way through the, the trees, and they just kind of naturally wear away that earth that's sitting there. Okay, so we saw three different types of erosion. And if you think about it, erosion can just be described as the movement of earth and how it's impacted by the elements or natural occurrences, like animal activity or the tides coming in or the winds picking up, okay? So each type of erosion is just based on some kind of natural occurrence and it's how the earth is impacted from that. So that's what we're going to experiment today with. So I got a pan or a tray here and we're going to take our earth materials and we're going to mentally just divide our pan in three. So I'm going to start with my dirt and I'm just going to pour it in one third of my tray. Okay, and now I need my sand. I'm going to pour it in the next third. And I need my rocks for the last. Okay. 
So we don't want to mix these all together because we want to see how each of these materials interact with each other, okay? And how they interact with the actual erosion. So we're going to start off with an animal erosion. And humans are animals, so I can just simulate that erosion using myself. We're going to imagine it's just an animal walking over the, the type of earth. So we'll start off with us just dragging our finger across each material. Okay, just lightly do it. Don't dig your finger way down. Just lightly drag it. Okay, so when you look at each, did you change how each of them are structured? Like, did you cause a groove? Okay, now what if we repeated this multiple times? Is it going to get deeper or is it going to get more pronounced? Are we going to start moving more around? Is one of these easier to move than the other? Okay, so you can see how each material would respond differently to the different types of animal erosion. Okay, what about wind erosion? So for the wind erosion, I'm just going to blow across each of these, okay? So Okay, was there one of these that was really impacted by the wind erosion? Okay, this one, maybe not so much. This one, not a whole lot of activity at all. Okay, so the response from the wind erosion is different in each of these. So for our final one, we have water. Okay, so I'm just going to gently pour this across. We're going to simulate like a light rain. Okay, so I'm just going to gently pour this across each material. Okay, so looking at that, was there any difference between them? Okay, the, the dirt here didn't seem like it was affected much. It just kind of absorbed all that water. Maybe a little bit got pushed aside. The sand really changed quite a bit. So if you think about building at a sand castle at the beach, dry sand's not gonna do a whole lot. And then wet sand really sticks together. Okay, so this wet sand changed quite a bit whenever we poured the water on it. And then the rocks, now they just look wet, so not a whole lot there. We're gonna up the amount of rain to try to see how more uh, water erosion is going to change. So we're gonna pour quite a bit in here. Okay, so based on that, did a whole lot happen? The, wa the rocks over here, again, didn't move much. The water actually just kind of pooled around it and then kind of started seeping into the sand. The sand really changed. And then our dirt here, again, most of that just got absorbed. Okay, so now we can retry each of our experiments with the animal and the wind to see how, now that it's wet, if it changes. Okay, so if we drag our finger across the dirt that's now wet, is that gonna change it? What about with the wet sand? How does that change? Okay, and then what about the wet rock? Okay, so if I blow on these now, simulating wind erosion, how is that going to change then? Okay, so the, the dirt, since it absorbed a lot of that water, is still kind of dry on top. So it moved quite a bit. The sand didn't move much anymore, and the rocks still didn't move. Okay, so just based on how the environment is affecting uh, or being affected by the elements, we can actually see how erosion changes. Okay? And this is just like a quick scale on each of the different types of erosion. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and clean up our mess here, and then we're going to move on to look at how, t uh, how time and activity in erosion actually affect each other. Okay, so go ahead and clean up this and then tune back in. All right, so we're back with a clean work surface and our three plastic bottles that we place our soft rocks in. So these soft rocks, remember, these are kind of things like limestone and sandstone. Lucky for us, Kansas has a lot of both. Okay, so we are going to take about half of the bottle and fill it with water as well as our rocks. So I didn't put water in this last one, so I'm going to go ahead and match that with the last two. Okay, 
So make sure your lids are on nice and tight. Now this activity is going to be looking at how either the passage of time or the activity, the level of activity of erosion changes the earth. Okay, so for bottle A, we're going to shape this to simulate either the passage of time or the level activity. This is going to be our low level activity or just a few days. Bottle B, we're going to shake this more. So this is going to be an increase in activity or we can look at it as a longer period of time, like maybe 50 years. And then bottle C, we're going to shake this even more than the last two. So this one is going to be simulating either the highest level activity or 100 years. Okay. So if you want to think of this in terms of activity, think of bottle A as something like a small pond where there's not a whole lot of wind, there's not a whole lot of water activity. It's just some activity, so some stuff might change. Bottle B is going to be like a lake where there is going to be a lot of activity of animals and wind and water, but it's not going to be a whole lot like bottle C, which we can think of as the ocean. Or if we want to think of this in terms of time, we can say this is five years, this is 50, and this is 100 or more. So to simulate these, we're going to shake them a different amount of time, and then we're going to look at how much has changed. So one, just take a look at the clarity of the water in these bottles. It's pretty clear, right? So as we shake this and increase the amount of activity of the rocks and the movement of the rocks, we're going to be simulating erosion. So what do you guys think is going to happen to these rocks? Are they going to start breaking apart? Or are they going to stay the same? So for bottle A, we're going to shake it five times. Bottle B is going to be shaken 25 times. And bottle C is going to be shaken 50 times. And then we're going to do each three times. So for a total of 15, 75, and 150 shakes in each of these bottles. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with bottle A and just shake this five times. Okay, so if we look at the bottom, did it change much? Is there a whole lot of sand? No. Is it a little bit more cloudy? A little bit, yeah. Now we're going to shake bottle B and C. I'm going to shake both of these at the same time, 25 times, and then I'm going to continue this with 25 more times, okay? Okay, so look at the levels of cloudiness in each of these. Bottle A, pretty clear. Bottle B, a little more murky, and bottle C is a lot dirtier. So as we're looking at the bottoms, there's a little bit more sand accumulated or broken pieces that are smaller in bottle C. Okay, and again, we're going to repeat this two more times. So this bottle shaken 15 times, this is shaken 75, and this is shaken 150. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so we just finished shaking each of these bottles. So this was shaken 15 times, 75, and 150 times. So as we look at these from down below, I can maybe put my hand behind them to get a better shot of the color. Okay, so as we look at this one, it's still pretty clear. It's a little bit more cloudy than when we started. This one is a lot more cloudy than from when we started. And if we compare these two, it's kind of hard to tell the difference, but just looking at how much of the rocks we can see in bottle C, the one with a lot of activity, there is a whole lot of murkiness going on. So if we take a look at the bottom of this, there's quite a bit of sand or like small rocks that started to get displaced and broken up. Bottle B, we don't have nearly as much. And then bottle A is still pretty clear. Okay, so again, this could simulate either the passage of time or the level of activity. So as time went on or as the activity in that area increased, okay, so we have less time, more time, less activity, more activity, we saw more erosion. And that's one of the key things about erosion. It's not a quick process. So you might see small changes day to day, 
But if we think about the grand scale of things over 50 years or 150 years or 500 years or 1,000 years, we keep going on and the impact of erosion gets greater and greater where entire coastlines might change or the entire the type of earth that we find there might change. One day we might find that it's full of large rocks and then we come back 500 years later and it's a sandy area. Okay? So we can see that the erosion changes the earth in slow ways and it's due to natural processes. And it can either happen over long periods of time or with lots of activity. All right, thank you guys so much for exploring with me today, learning a little bit about erosion. Tune back in again to have another lesson from Exploration Place. Thanks.